Oh, good morning. Welcome. If you can't do a Sam, we're doing this for you, man. So it's time to learn. What we learned so far is that eight bar three is an incorrect question. Eight plus three is 11. We also learned that antiderivative of x, y, d, antiderivative of x, y, d, it's like, what? This is even worse, did not even put the d. Hello? It's, um, if you want thing, okay, so we can't do that one, but we can do antiderivative of x, y, dx. That's, okay, that's a question, x squared, over 2y plus c. So here we go. Derivatives of inverse functions. Yes. Sam, are you there? Hello? Sam, are you there? <laughs> Hello? You want home? Sam, I miss you. <coughs> Hope you're having fun. That's my GFA partner. All right, so Sam, we do miss you. Let's take a look at problem six. What's going on here? It says show that f and g are inverses of each other. That's a pre-calculus problem. We did that in pre-calc. A, analytically, and B, graphically. And then C, find the slopes of the tangents at 115 and 15.1, right? The general derivative of an inverse theorem two ways. Oh, they're demanding. These math book, these math authors sure do ask a lot. Okay, so we're going to uh, we're going to do six, but not thirty-six. So we can take this space over here in thirty-six to do some of this pre-calculus stuff. Like back when they said, prove the f and g are inverses of each other. If f and g are inverses of each other, then in pre-calculus we learned that two criteria have to be satisfied. One, we have to prove that <coughs> f of g of x is equal to x. And we also have to prove that g of f of x is equal to x. So, the pre-calculus here, I mean to establish a first condition, second condition. Condition one, is f of g of x equal to x? Well, f of x is defined as, so what is f of g of x in this particular case? f of g of x would be f of the square root of 16 minus x. And according to the rule for the f function, which is to find the output, take 16 minus input squared. So f, uh, if we follow the rule for the f function, every function has an input, a rule, and an output. The rule is take 16 minus the input, which is the square root of 16 minus x squared. So that's 16 minus the quantity, 16 minus x, which sure enough is x. So the first condition is satisfied. And if you were to go through and see if the second condition is satisfied, go ahead and do that on your own. Do the pre-calculus required to show that g of f of x condenses down to x. Okay, here's g of f of x. So it's a square, root, square root of x squared is technically that's the value of x. So it doesn't match up, but because of the <coughs> domain restriction, because x is greater than or equal to zero, we do get back to x. So if it weren't for this domain restriction, uh, this would have failed. So now, so we did it, we did it analytically. Now let's do this graphically. Part B. Shall we put the G in B then tomorrow? That's, well, wow, see, I mean, sometimes, you know, people are like, what's going on in this course? But then you realize, oh, everything that happens here happens for a reason. So, yeah, the G in B in tomorrow is really going to help you today. By the way, um, how many of you feel like you are learning more calculator skills? We go through the course. Calculator skills that you never really use. Yeah, calculator skills really matter. So that's putting the T in vegan tomorrow. Technology the TI. in the real world. Putting the TI in <laughs> tomorrow. All right, tomorrow, tomorrow. And it's really random. Okay, so what is the 16 minus x squared graph? We're going to do the 16 minus x squared graph in green 
And remember, it's only the right half of this parabola. So let's go up to 16. And it's a parabola, parent graph x squared, but it's opening down. And <coughs> open down and then shift to 16 up. So that's the graph of f of x. The graph of g of x is the square root of 16 minus x graph. Notice that when x is equal to 16, the square root of 0 is 0. So let's do this one in blue. So we know that this contains the point, we'll put this at 16 comma 0. And we could analyze to get all the reflections and the shifts. But suppose I put a, uh, I mean, what's another number that's easy to take the square root of? like 9, and so x is equal to 7. 16 minus 7 is 9, the square root of 9 is 3. So golf ball 7 is going up to 3, and really what you're getting is this graph. So we can tell that there's good evidence that, first of all, the graph of the square root of 16 minus x looks like this blue graph, and would you please note that the line y equals x should be the axis of symmetry whenever you sketch the graph of f of x in green, and its inverse function, we prove their inverses of each other algebraically, f inverse of x, sure enough. Taken together, the graph of f and f inverse should generate the beauty of symmetry about the line y equals x. Taken together, these two graphs should be symmetric with respect to the line y equals x. Does it appear graphically that green and like if you were to reflect green over the line y equals x, you would get blue. Yeah, they appear to be symmetric graphically. Now, now to move into the calculus here, we're concerned about slopes of tangent lines at 1, 15, 15, 1. I just want to let you know right up front that for today's work, the hardest part can be x0, comma, instead of y original, this is original and then reflected. Instead of y0, the book calls the original y-coordinate a. Just a symbol that our book uses. It's not universal throughout all of calculus, but our x0, y0. Our book uses the letter a to represent the original y-coordinate. So what is the slope of the tangent line at 1, 15? By the way, that's right here. Here's the point 1, comma, 15. And at 15, comma, 1, so it's 10, 1, comma, 15. Now, 15, comma, 1, by 15, comma, 1, they mean 15, comma, 1 on the derivative. So, this is the... Uh, blue point, even though it doesn't say it here, I'm here to let you know what they really want. They really want the slope of the tangent line at 15 comma 1 on the inverse function. We want to see how they're related to each other. By the way, what do you guess the relationship will be between the slope of the tangent line at 1 comma 15 on the original function and the slope of the tangent line at 15 comma 1 on the inverse. How will those two slopes be related to each other, if at all? There actually is a mathematical relationship. What do you guess it's going to be, Devin? I guess they would be equal to each other. Okay, equality is actually not the correct relationship. Oh. It's not a relationship of equality. Does anyone want to take a different guess? John? Are they both? Um, well, wait, I'm asking the question, like, like, for example, suppose this one comes out to be like negative two. We have a calendar, I don't know what it is. If this one is negative two, negative one, negative one half. It's just, it's not the opposite reciprocal. It's just a reciprocal. It's a reciprocal relationship. That's what we're going to end up finding. And you know what? There's reason to believe that it would be a reciprocal relationship. Because if you think about it, before you do anything with the calculus, if slope is change in y over change in x, then, I don't know if you're, you remember this, but you remember how to take, find the inverse of a function? 
you let X and Y trade places. Remember that? X and Y trade places and solve for Y. Well, if you let X and Y trade places, if you get slope of the inverse, it'll be change in X over change. X and Y will trade places. Just take the reciprocal. Flip them. Flip. So that's the lesson. So the lesson is over, but now we have to do examples. Otherwise, people will think they didn't get their money's worth. So, is that going on to, Insta, going on to Instagram or Snap, is it Snapchat or Instagram? I don't think Snapchat. Okay, so, or is it Snap Face? I can't, I can never remember. Snap, snap Face. Snap Face, that's what snap it is. Snap so, friends, first of all, I do want to let you know that the formula for today is. Snap Green? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's my fault. So here's the formula for today. F inverse prime. The derivative of the inverse function evaluated at A. In this case, A is equal to 15 because A is the y coordinate of the original function, which means if you want to find the slope of the tangent line on the inverse function at the original y-coordinate, then you don't really have to worry about taking the inverse of the function. Here's what you do. Just take the reciprocal of f of x original. f prime of x original. So, as long as you know the original x value that corresponds to the original y value, then if you want to find the slope of the tangent line on the inverse function at a, you don't really have to do that much work with inverses. All you have to do is take the original function, take its derivative, evaluate it at the original x value that pairs with the original y value. So that is reversible. You can go both ways on this. If you want to find f inverse prime at x original, that would be 1 over f prime of a. I mean, if it's a reciprocal relationship, then we go both ways. If you uh, know that this is negative 2, that's negative 1 half. And if you know that this is negative 1 half, you can flip it and get that's negative 2. So the formula works both ways. Let's do some examples of this. On the next page, problem 72. Unless you have any, do you have any questions on what I just wrote down here? Yeah, go. Question. Does anyone have a question? A is the original y coordinate. Uh, right here. A is the original y coordinate. Okay, let's go to, let's do an actual example here. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's 74. Okay. Okay, let's do an example. It says, find f inverse prime of a for the function f and the given real number a. Oh, by the way, the prime, if you were to prime factor 297, you get 27. 297 is 27 times 11. That's a fun math fact that I thought you'd like to know. Wait, what? It's written down. So let's take a look at number 72. And let's start with our formula. F inverse prime of A. Because that's what they're asking for. So we're going to write down the formula for F inverse prime of A. Who can remember what it is? Without looking at your notes, does anyone happen to remember what you wrote down about 90 seconds ago? One. Uh, uh, original. X original. So, by the way, in this problem, in this problem, X original comma Y original is something comma negative eleven. So, notice that what we need. I mean, we can take the derivative. That's no problem. Just one twenty seventh of blob. I don't know how to find the. I know how to find the derivative one twenty seven times a blob. 127 times the derivative of the law. Okay. So, but we are going to have to do some pre-calculus in order to say, well, when y is negative 11, what is x? 
So let's do the pre-calculus portion of this problem first. Negative 11 equals 127 times x to the fifth plus 2x cubed. We have to solve this equation for x. It's not a lot of fun, but 27 times 11 does happen to be um, negative 297. So when, when you multiply both sides by 27, you get x to the fifth plus 0x to the fourth plus 2x cubed plus 0x squared plus 0x plus 297 equals 0. I put all the terms in there, so I'm trying to trigger in your mind the idea that the rational zero theorem from pre-calculus comes into play here. So you would want to look at all the factors of 297. So off to the side, you'd say 297. That is 1 times 297. And I'm here to tell you that 3 goes into 297 33 times 11 times. Uh, 33 I'm sorry, 33 times 3 times. So, 9 times 11. So, if 3 goes into 297, 99 times. If you thought about what it means to factor a number, you'd come up with that eventually. So then, you, so, then you would look at the possible zeros. And it's like you would try 1 by synthetic division and then negative 1. So, you would put 1 in the backwards L and check to see is it a remainder of 0, question mark, and then negative 1 and it wouldn't work. And then you would try 3. And when you get to negative 3, okay, try it. See if you remember anything about synthetic division. 1, 0, 2, 0, 0, 297. Please perform the synthetic division and see what the remainder turns out to be. We found it came out to be a remainder of zero. So that tells us that um, negative three is a solution to this equation. Or in other words, that means that the point negative three comma negative 11 is on the graph of this function. F of x contains this point. Therefore, F inverse of x contains the point negative 11 comma negative three. So now we know the coordinates of a point on the inverse function. What are they asking for? They're asking for um, the slope of the tangent line on the inverse function at negative 11. So when x is negative 11, essentially, and that is the input, they are asking for f inverse prime at negative 11. That's the question. We have a formula for that. The formula is 1 over f prime of x0, which means we have to take 1 over f prime of what number? <coughs> negative 3 is correct. So now let's take a break and find f prime of x. Would you please use your calculus knowledge to find the derivative of f as a function of x? dx dx. So, I mean, I'm getting something like, well, Basically, what I have to do now is plug in a negative 3 to this. That'll tell me what the denominator is. So it's 127 times. In fact, use your calculator skills, your newfound calculator skills. Please type negative 3 store A into your calculator. Just put a negative 3 in for A. And then type in 127 times the quantity 5 a carrot 4 plus 6 a carrot 2.
then one divided by answer, because you want them to take one divided by that. So one divided by ANS, and ANS is just um, by the enter button. So it's a second, then ANS. But that should get the answer to this thing. Now, I believe the answer is 0.058835294 approximately. If you take the reciprocal, because not only do you have to find f prime of negative 3, which we did here, but then you have to take 1 divided by that. But I'd like to give you an opportunity to practice this. So try number 74 on your own. Please try right. Let's do it. problem 74. So by the way, final answer to this problem, point oh five eight eight two three five two nine four. One second. Why? Okay. Okay, so turn the page, try problem 74 on your own. I will put the G in vegan trial, sketch a graph of what's going on so that you can orient yourself. I'm going to pause the camera while we work this one through. Okay, so the camera just came back. Again, once you do the pre calculus, this isn't too tough. The pre-calculus told you that when y is negative 1 half, x is pi over 3. So that was a lot of work, but it's our pre-calculus. Now for the calculus. Once you find that the value of x that corresponds to y equals negative 1 half is pi over 3, then you just go to your formula. And you say, look, if I want to find f inverse prime of negative 1 half, I just take 1 over f prime of pi over 3. And guess what the derivative of cosine 2x is. The derivative of cosine 2x is negative sine of 2x times 2. In fact, I think I actually showed my work on that somewhere. Uh, probably not. Okay, so, oh yeah, here it is. f prime of x is negative sine of 2x times 2 times the derivative of the blob, so that would be negative 2 sine of 2x. So the formula negative 2 sine of 2x is the formula into which I place the pi over 3. Negative two, negative 2 sine of 2x. And since the sine of 2 pi over 3 is radical 3 over 2, the 2's cancel. I get negative 1 over radical 3. The answer is negative radical 3 over 3. Let's pause here and take any questions you might have on problem 74, the answer to which is negative radical 3 over 3. Make sure it shows up on the camera. Yep, it looks like it does. Any questions on how to get negative radical 3 over 3? Let's turn the page. Let's wrap up our lesson by doing the last problem. See if you can do the last one on your own. So try problem 80.